uh, when you load JS9, it will give you a nice little welcome message and it will provide you with a bit of a walkthrough. Um, this walkthrough is very handy actually. It points out things like the uh, scale adjustment that lets you, um, for different uh, types of observations, lets you see the details. So for some sorts of things, you want to use a linear scale. For some sorts of things, a log scale or an arc sine, a hyperbolic arc sine scale or an hyperbolic sine scale. For what we're doing today, we're going to, you're going to want to use a log scale. They also point out the, um, the brightness controls. And uh, we're not really going to use the contrast and uh, bias sliders today. And then, uh, and we're also not going to use any of the fancy color schemes here. We're just going to use red, green, and blue since we're going to be making true color images. So we'll go ahead and close that down. When you first load up JS9, the default image is this image of the Lagoon Nebula. We can double check real quick what filter the image was taken with by going to Image, Display Fits Header, and looking down, we got all kinds of information about the image, what date was the image taken, da, 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 da. How, how long was the exposure, so how many seconds were they observing for, da, 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 da. ah, here we go, the filter. So here they tell us that this particular image was taken with a red filter in front of the camera. So that's a good place to start. Now when we look at this here, we just see a scattering of stars. However, changing our scale to log, we see a little bit of a hint of something over here. This, uh, there's a little smudge showing up. Let's see if we can make it appear um, better against our background. So right now, with our brightness limits, even the empty background is showing up as kind of a, a grayish color. Let's adjust our low brightness limit until the empty sky really looks empty. Oh, oh I might have gone too far there. Let's back up. Let's find adjust. So I'm going to use my little buttons here. Okay. Oh, I think I went a little too far. I'm starting to miss some of the nebula. So notice how if I make my low brightness limit too low, even some of the empty sky starts to look grayish in the image. So let's adjust, adjust, adjust. One thing I want to point out here is that the actual measured values are staying the same. As we move the mouse around, if you look up here, you'll see there's this pixel, whoa, I didn't realize I could do that. Uh, there's this pixel value that shows up. And that's telling you at the particular spot that you've got your cursor how many photons were detected. So over here in the empty sky, even the empty sky, some photons were being detected. There's actually, um, you know, even the electronics themselves end up injecting some signal into the image. And so we're, you know, counting 340-ish photons over here. The nebula itself is just barely brighter than that, 350. The brightest spots, though, do get pretty bright, like 5, you know, 530, you know, and then, of course, some of the stars, you know, thousands of photons are counted from these stars, or at least from the brightest ones. Let me zoom in, actually, to help you see what that pixel value is representing. So do you see how when I've zoomed in as much as I can, the image looks pixelated, it looks like a bunch of little squares? This is showing us you know, the actual little squares on the detector, where there is a little square that was collecting light here. And this one collected 430 photons during the time of the image. This one down here collected 435. Going up here, 
we see that this one collected 2,342. This one collected 1,119, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And as I move around, as I go onto a new box, a new number shows up there in pixel value, where, because, you know, each pixel was collecting photons. So I'm going to go back to my reset my zoom and I'm going to finish scaling my image. When we're scaling, we're not actually changing any of the numbers. We're only changing how they display for our eyes. So these stars are showing up a nice bright white and a lot of the nebula is showing up as a dim gray. So let's see, you know, we don't care about those stars. So I'm going to decrease my brightness limit so that all of the stars are looking just as a nice bright white, and that's gonna really bring out the nebula. This was maybe a bit too much. I've got it it's appearing kind of washed out there, but, uh, you know, that looks pretty good for helping me see the extent of the nebula here. I could spend some time really fine tuning it, right, to, really help make the, the boundaries of it clear, to help be able to see some of the structure. Like, do you see how there's like a dark band here, and it's lighter over here and lighter over here? So there's all kinds of features that we might bring out and notice and discuss. And so going into kind of advanced mode, you might play around with the stretch. You might say, oh, you know, I really want to, to talk about the banding that's showing up, kind of the structure. Or you might say, no, nah, I really care about the overall size. 